Hello, and welcome to day two of Let's All Figure Out Who the President Is. Anyway, my my fears of Donald Trump getting reelected are done. Not that I'm, you know, jumping for joy that Joe Biden's our president, but it's over. And yesterday, I just, I, I, I lean more to the side of pessimism and, and thank God you to some of you guys that are much more optimistic, especially you, Lan Coon. You've been talking me through all of this because I've just been such a, a pessimist through this whole thing of just saying, like, Trump's going to win. Um, anyway, um, even if Trump gets Pennsylvania now, it doesn't look like that's going to matter because uh, Biden will get 270 on the nose if he gets who is all the remaining state, the remaining states that are leaning in his direction, like Trump will get Georgia, and that's not going to matter. Um, <clears throat> so... I just got a few things that I want to say going into Biden being announced as the president-elect and what I think should be happening after this. Now, there's going to be disputes uh, specifically with Wisconsin because the vote was close enough that Trump can call for a recount there. So nothing could formally be declared till all that red tape is, is covered up, crossed out, whatever. And... I see a number of reports of very suspicious things happening. I don't see too many mainstream medias covering these reports, but you know, that's the whole thing of, Oh, it's a big cons conspiracy to cover up for the Democrats and stuff like that. And I just want to address two of the key things that I saw that I see a number of Trump supporters pulling out saying like, here you go. This, this election is just completely fraudulent. Um, Number one is a report that shows in uh, Michigan that a cluster of several thousand, I forget the exact number, but the bottom line is thousands of votes registered in the overnight hours after polls closed, and they all magically registered for Joe Biden. Um, there's a number of graphs that show this, a number of just offhand reports that show this. And the reason why that is suspect is people are saying how, you know, even if it was a cluster of, um, you know, machines that got tabulated and, 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 and kicked in their results all at the same time, or a cluster of ballots, uh, absentee ballots got, you know, read at the same time and just like it just lagged behind them, the machines dumped the numbers in. How could it be that several thousand votes all went to Biden and zero registered for Trump. All right. Now there's a number of places reporting this and none of which are mainstream places and none of which are Trump. Like, like something like this should be something that Trump should be, you know, screaming from the heavens. Unless I missed him talking about this, he should be saying, how the hell are there several thousand votes for Joe Biden in the matter of a couple minutes and zero registered for, for president Trump. Like that is very suspicious. That seems like someone is quote unquote stuff in the ballot box. Because that's what it looks like if that report is true. So why isn't Trump of all people screaming this from the heavens? <clears throat> Another thing that people are pointing to, point number two of suspicion right now, is Wisconsin and the voter turnout. Now, these are much more concrete numbers that are hard to dispute. Last I looked, the total voter turnout for the state was at 90%. That I can tell you from all my work on campaigns, and I actually worked a national campaign in Wisconsin, I can tell you that is exorbitantly high, a 90% turnout. And to, to reflect things here, the national turnout this year, voter turnout, was 75%. Not of the populace, of the registered voters, 75%. Um, just goes to show you one out of every four registered voters sat home. Thanks for helping out. Anyway, um, which is more along the average of things of how, you know, voter turnout is in this country. Half the people don't vote. A quarter of the people that are registered to vote don't even bother to get up to vote. <laughs> Way to go, America. Anyway, um, so people are saying like, oh, all of a sudden a state like Wisconsin that is pretty much holding the turn of power here in its balance because if Trump were to win Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Georgia, that changes things completely. So 
Yeah, it is pretty suspicious that Wisconsin did get 90% of the vote. But that being said, I would like to see a little better look into things here. Because I know a lot of people are going to say things like, well, maybe the people in Wisconsin were just fed up with President Trump and the Democratic voters just showed up out the ass because they hated the job that President Trump did. And the the people that were voting for Trump felt that much more motivated to go out there. But it's like, well, no, you're still 15 percent above the national average. That is still kind of fishy. But what I would like to know <laughs> is more specifically what were the resources put into this state? Like, if you find out that, I don't know, maybe compared to the average swing state, 15% more money was spent on canvassing in Wisconsin or or get out the vote programs, you know, people knocking on doors election day saying, please get out and vote. I don't care who you vote for, just get out and vote. Like, you know, if things like that are seen to be much more in a higher percentage in, in, in Wisconsin comparative to like, say a state like Pennsylvania, then yeah, I'd be like, okay, I can, I can buy that. There's 90%. If, if just both parties or just one party went more than out of their way to get people to the polls to vote, then yeah, I can understand seeing a 90% voter turnout. But again, that is very high and it does raise a cause for suspicion, especially in a state that is as highly contested as Wisconsin is. So that being said, if all the investigating goes into this and everything is seen as just good to go, the Supreme Court looks at it, all the other lower judiciary courts look at it, and even if it doesn't make it up to the Supreme Court, if it's just, you know, stopped at a federal level of courts, then okay, that's it. I'm sorry. You, you just you can't continue to piss and moan about if the process was carried out, it was examined, and nothing could be found because you can't just hold up and keep the president in place just because you think things were fraudulent and nothing was found fraudulent. Like, I'm sorry, that's just, it's just you just can't work like that. You could complain about the system needs to change. That, fine, complain about that. But if the process runs its due course, I am putting the onus on the Republican members of Congress, all the Senate, House of Representatives, every Republican governor around the state, if Donald Trump and this election is all wrapped up and Joe Biden is seen to be the president-elect, all the courts have r ran out their, their rounds of examination. If Donald Trump still says, well, I'm still the winner, I'm still the president, I want every single Republican to stand up for democracy and tell him to shut the hell up, concede the election, put your big boy pants on, and hand the torch over to Joe in January on your way out. You orange-haired ass... Well, orange skin. Sorry. Mess that up. Anyways. Like, I'm sorry. At this point, like, <laughs> Trump trying to con continue to rabble-rouse. If everything runs its due course and everything runs its due diligence and things are seen... Yep, okay, we couldn't find any wrongdoing, any outright over examples of absolute corruption, malpractice, whatever. Then you lost, Donald. You just lost. Anyways, it, 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 I'm speaking more of just a, a respecter of democracy and an American at this point, because honestly... I don't particularly care who wins this election. I'd rather it be Biden because, again, there's just too much power in the Republican Party side of things right now. And you got to have at least one cog, one firm cog that's on the other side of the aisle. Just, I'm, just, I'm a big believer in that. But, man, it's time to respect democracy at this point, Donald. I mean, I, I, I know it's like just impossible for you to say, like, congratulations, Joe. I can see the election to you, and I'm not expecting to say that. But just stop with the rabble rousing. Again, if there is if there is cahoots to be found, I'll be the first to say Joe Biden doesn't deserve to be president. I will be the first to say if stone cold proof is found that ballot boxes were stuffed or that dead people vote or anything like that, any sort of shenanigans like that, I will be the absolute first person to say Joe Biden doesn't deserve to be president because his party cheated his victory. 
But until then, you know, hey, leave the keys on the desk on your way out, bitch. Anyways, have a good day, everyone. And huh, let's see who finally wins this election. Because we still haven't had that declared yet. That is all.